subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon, so you never miss any video from my channel. Yo, now Cam TV, make sure you like, subscribe, and share with y'all cool things like Facebook and Reddit and Instagram and wherever else. And guys, the Panthers have made another splash in free agency. And I like this move, man. I do like this move. This move is a very good move for us. I was surprised, you know what I'm saying, that we um did it. Because I just I didn't think we were gonna have the money to be able to get somebody like this. But uh, you know, we did re another splash move that I'm surprised about, but I am really happy about, you know what I'm saying? Like so far, Marty Herney, man, hey, you know, I might have been wrong about you, man. I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not sold yet. Obviously the draft hasn't happened yet. There's a lot of things that we still need to do. This is an early part of free agency, but He's doing some pretty amazing things right now, man. He's doing some pretty good things, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, we got to talk about it. So, let's get started. The Carolina Panthers have just signed Dontari Poe to a three-year deal worth, like, $27 million. So, it's about, like, 9 to $10 million every year. But, um, I'm happy about this move, man. I'm really happy about this move. Um, you know, so we needed somebody to replace Tarlou to the lane. I thought they were going to just let Vernon Butler replace him. But uh, that wasn't in the cards for them. You know what I'm saying? They wanted to get somebody else. They got Don Tari Poe. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Star was, I like Star Lucille. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't a bad player. But, um, you know, I think Don Tari Poe is just as good as a run stopper. And I think he's a little bit better of a pass rusher, too, from the interior position. You know what I'm saying? I think him and K1 Short can be a real force to be reckoned with. And I don't think the deal was, like, outrageous. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, I really like this deal. I was surprised. I didn't think we were going to have the money because he played really well with the Falcons last year. You know what I'm saying? He had a one-year prove-it deal, and he proved it. He played really well. You know what I'm saying? So, I thought, you know what I'm saying? I didn't think the Panthers were ever going to be assigned somebody like that. I thought they were going to have Vernon Button take his spot because we don't have that much cap space. But, um, Marty Herney worked his magic, man. I'm, 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 I'm going to be honest with you, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I was really surprised when I seen this. Um, I didn't expect it. It just was, it was un, it was really surprising to me. You know what I'm saying? I thought I thought uh, maybe we'll see another safety, or you know, just you know, uh, I, I thought more of a safety is probably gonna be the next uh, free agent that we got. But now our D line is, is is pretty solid again, man. Like that that hole that started a little too left, started a little too late left. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's filled. So we got Mario Addison, uh, Dontari Poe, K1 Short, and Julius Peppers. We're gonna be a force to be reckoned with again, man. You know what I'm saying? We're probably gonna. I, I'm saying like 50. If I want us to have 50 sacks or better, you know what I'm saying? We got. We can't be having less sacks than last year, man. But I'm saying 50 sacks or better. I think we can do it. I think our, you know, our pass rush is gonna be, you know, top notch again with this side of the Atari, the Atari pull. And um, I was surprised, man. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, man. I didn't see this coming. I thought it was gonna be a safety, maybe an Eric Reed or Morgan Burnett or you know somebody, you know, whatever. He doesn't even talk about. Us trying to figure out how we get signed Tyron Matthews, which sounds great, but let's be honest, man. We don't have the money for that, man. We have to do some, a lot of shaking and moving and joking and jiving to, you know, make some space for this guy or whatever. And I think he's a great player, but just there's no way you can pay for him. So I was surprised that we went, uh, you know, got done Tari Poe. I didn't expect it. You know what I'm saying? I thought he would you know, command more money, but, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure, man. I think he did play, play good for the Falcons. But I guess, I don't know why the Falcons didn't want to resign him. I don't know. But the Panthers will take him. That's, I know that for damn sure. The Panthers will take him. So. And I got to be honest with y'all, man. Marty Herney in the free agency period so far has been doing a really good job. And um, the reason why I say that, man, is because we have very limited cap space. I kind of wanted to see what he was going to do with it. You know, like I just... I, we have very limited cap space. So I was like, let me see what this guy's going to do. Because, you know, it's hard to make <laughs> stuff happen with limited cap space. And everybody wants to get paid. So I was like, let me see how he attracts free agents. Let me see how he gets free agents in the building. And the moves he made so far were pretty good, man. He got his receiver and Tory Smith by trading Daryl Worthy. He follows that up with getting Brashad Breeland, who I thought, you know what I'm saying, who most of the people rated as one of the, you know, top 101 free agents. And I thought he was going to ask for a lot more money. I thought he was going to get a lot more money. You know, we got him for a pretty reasonable deal. Then, we re-signed Julius Peppers, who, you know, obviously could teach the young guys and just, a you know, a great vet and was very productive last year, too. 
And now we signed our Tari Poe to fill in the hole that starts a little too late left. That is a good way to start free agency, man. That is a good way. I don't know if we got any more cap space. I don't know if we're going to be signing anybody else. Um, I don't see the marketplace for Terrell Pryor being that big. So I think we might be able to get him on a cheap deal. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I think we might be able to get him on a cheap deal because I don't think his market is that big. But so far, even let's say for his whatever, free agency ended now. I wouldn't be mad at this free agency, man. I feel like he was pretty productive. And then the good thing about it is that like nothing leaked out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nothing was, was you know, he they, they kept everything on the hush. You know what I'm saying? They kept they kept everything, you know, pretty low-key, pretty mellow. And people didn't really know what they were doing until it happened. So I think the, the Ontario Poe and the Bashar Breeland, uh, you know, picks or uh, free agent pickups, are very good for our team. I think they're, you know, they're very, they're good, very good for our team. I think that those are the right moves to make, and he, he did them with contracts that are reasonable. It's not like, you know, not like Dave Gettleman his last year who signed Matt Khalil in a horrible contract and screwed us over. I think the contract he signed us to is like very reasonable deals. Like for instance, the um, the Bashar Breland deal, like. The cap hit the first year is only like three million, so it's like the first year it's a very low cap hit, very very low. Um, but then the second and third year, that's when it kind of balloons to like nine and ten million. But it makes sense because obviously we don't have that much cap say. So the first year is on the low end, but the, the other two years are on the high end. And I think he's doing. Like, I think the Atari post contract is probably gonna be like the same way. You know, the first year is gonna be on the low end because he's he's make, he's he's backloading their contracts. So he can sign some more players and, and you know make a, a pretty good team now. And that's a good free agency move, man. So Marty Herney, man, so far, and I'm prefacing this because anything can happen. But so far in the free agency period, you've been doing pretty good, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? If you can keep it up and then you can follow that up with a good draft, you know, I'll I'll make a video, you know, recanting my statement because I everyone knows, man, I was not on the Marty Herney bandwagon. I didn't like you know hiring him back. I wanted another GM to get hired because I felt like why bring a kid into a room? The kid destroys the room. You clean it up and bring the same kid back in the room. It makes no sense to me. But uh, maybe maybe that kid did learn. Maybe he, that kid's a little bit smarter. You know what I'm saying? So uh, Marty Herney, so far, good job, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep working your magic, man, because you're filling up some holes that we definitely need filled up. And it's not with like. No second, third year, you know, third tier player that you know we just signed, but it's not really gonna contribute. I think both of those, the biggest signings we have, which is you know Dontari Poe and Bashar Breeland, are gonna be big contributors next year. So that defense is gonna be a one still. That's a good thing. So this free agency has set us up for the draft in a great way. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like the draft we're we don't have that many holes to fill and. I think we can be able to fill them up pretty quickly. So this is my thing. This is how I feel about the draft. Now that we got somebody to replace Solo Tule, now we got another cornerback in Brashad Breeland. And, you know, uh, now we got Julius Peppers back, and um, you know, got Torrey Smith. This is what we should do, right? This is how I see things. In the first round, if Darius Geis, now yes, I know his name now. I come on saying Goosey. I apologize. His name is Geis. I know it now. Forgive me, but uh, if in the first round, if Darius Geis is on the board when we're there, draft him. Draft him, you know, like, because I feel like we need a dominant running game. I think he'll be perfect, like, uh, heir apparent to Jonathan Stewart. I think he'll be a very powerful runner, and, you know, he's, he's not slow either, you know what I'm saying? He ran a pretty good 40 time in the combine, too. So, if Darius Geis is there, draft him. The second round, uh... Depending on who's there, maybe a DJ Moore, maybe a um, Deion Kane, maybe a Courtney Sutton, whoever's there, because there's gonna be some, there's gonna be some receivers there. Draft a receiver second, you know, draft draft receiver second, whatever. If now mind you, if Darius guys is not there, I would rather you know, I'd rather you draft a receiver first round. But if Darius guys is there, I think he's a game changer. I think he'll be really good in our system. So I would think I'd rather them draft him. But if he's not there, get a receiver. But let's say let's go with the Darius guys is there. Get Darius guys. 
Then the second round, get a receiver like a Deion Kane or, you know, obviously a Cortland Sutton, DJ Moore, uh, DJ Chalk, Chark, Chark, I'm sorry. So, you know, get, get one of those guys. Um, and then the third round, I want us to double tap like we always double tap. So we double tap the cornerbacks, you know what I'm saying? We double tap them D-tackles. We, I think we should double tap the safeties. So when we get to the third round, we should double tap the safeties and like maybe a Justin Reed and maybe, um, I don't know, get you know draft another safety. Or maybe a Kaiser White or, or somebody. Draft another safety, draft two safeties, you know, free safety and strong safety. And um, I think we would successfully rebuild our receiving core room, got a new, another new dominant running back, our defense will be revamped with these two new safeties, new corner, and, you know, new D-tackle. And our offensive line will be, you know, what it is. Because we can move Taylor Moore into the guard spot. And, like I said, Matt Khalil, I don't think he's going anywhere. So, we should move Taylor Moore into the guard spot. Uh, and I think our line will be pretty good, man. I think it will be pretty hard to beat. Like, that, if, if we can execute that, and, let's, and we could just, like, trade, you know, um, like the rest of the picks, like maybe our fifth and sixth. I don't think we have a fourth rounder. Fifth and sixth and seventh. Trade up to like the fourth round, you know, because you, who cares about the fifth, sixth, and seventh? Trade all those picks, get to the fourth round or like the late third, like the late third round, and draft a DN, and then that'll be it for the draft. And I think we will have a very good draft. If we can, if he can execute that, I'll give Martin Henry a, a round of applause, man. I'll be up here giving him a standing ovation, man. So we'll see what Marty Henry does, but I think he set us up. So far, he set us up for the draft pretty well, so I'm not mad at it. Well, that's it for me, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share, share cool things like Facebook and Reddit and Instagram and wherever else. And guys, get in the comment section. Tell me what you think about this Dontari Poe deal. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Do you think he'll be able to fill Star Wars Tuesday's role well? How do you think about Marty Henry's free agency so far? Do you think he's doing a good job? Do you think he's doing a bad job? Let me know. And who do you think we should get in the draft? Because I think he set us up pretty well. And I told you how I think the first like four rounds should go. Let me know what you think. And I will see y'all next time.